You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. Hey friends, it's Nikayla here and I am back with another solo episode of Side Hustle Pro. If you're watching this on YouTube, I have a change of scenery. I'm usually in my podcast office, aka my closet office, but today I decided to take it to my cozy nook in our bedroom because I just wanted to switch it up for the solos. I wanted to kind of just relax a little bit, feel like I'm just talking to you guys, friend to friend, on the couch, on the phone, FaceTime. So that's what we're doing. And if you're watching this on YouTube and this is your first time coming over to my corner of the internet, let me introduce myself. And I know there are a bunch of new subscribers as well. So thank y'all and welcome. So I'm Nikayla of the Side Hustle Pro podcast. And I talk about all things scaling your side hustle into a full-time business. I am a full-time podcaster now, professional podcaster for the last, what is it now, going on seven years. <laughs> I always got to remember, when did I start? When did I quit? So started the podcast 2016, quit my job 2017. And full-time podcaster since then. I'm a mom of two. I have a four-year-old son, nine-month-old baby girl. Yes, my baby girl is nine months. I can't believe it. Uh, my husband and I reside in NYC. And we are just entrepreneurs figuring it out, parenthood, juggling all the things. And so I'm here today with an update episode just to let you guys know where I've been, what I've been going through, <laughs> what's going on with me. So let me take a little sip of my tea from my best mom ever mug today. And oh, before I go on, speaking of new subscribers, y'all, if you are listening to this and I know a lot of you guys, you DM me, you send me emails and I so appreciate it. Could you do me a favor and head over to the Apple Podcast app or the Spotify app, wherever you listen and please leave your girl a review. Let them know that I love Styles of Pro <laughs> and you know, just uh, shout out to Astro Pro because those reviews are important, increasingly important. So thank you. Thank you for giving me a review, especially to celebrate 400 episodes. We are 400 episodes in and beyond now, because I believe this is going to be like 407, 406, 409, 410. I don't know, but we are beyond 400. And I, I guess this could kind of be the 400th celebration because I did not get to do that. So yes, as part of the celebration for 400, please leave Sahasa Pro a review. All right. So now let me get into my updates. First things first, what I have been most focused on in 2024, without a doubt, is my self-talk, is my mindset. If I sound like a broken record, if I've spoken about this before, oh well, because it's just that important. So I have to tell you guys, like as an entrepreneur, you know, before your validation came from where you worked, your title, people seeing that on your resume or meeting you at an event and hearing, oh, you work for so-and-so and, you know, seeing the look of being impressed on their face. And those are the kind of things that used to be part of what was validating to me and used to make me feel good. And I enjoyed having to unlearn that when I became an entrepreneur because no longer could I fall back on my resume. And it's to the point where, you know, people have pointed out to me that I have accolades and I have things that I can play up more even when I put my bio on webinars or reach out to a guest or anything like that. But I just take it for granted because it's not that important to me. It is not <laughs> what makes me who I am. And so I'm at the opposite extreme now, unfortunately. So I need to kind of work that back in and remind people like who the F I am. But anyway, <laughs> that is something where I would feel validated for. That would remind me like, oh yeah, I'm smart. I work for so-and-so. And then becoming an entrepreneur, it kind of shifts and you don't realize it, but you're unintentionally feeling and tying validation and success with money. So when your bank account is fat, you feel like, oh yeah, I'm the bomb. I'm doing it. I'm great. And because entrepreneurship is filled with so much volatility, 
Some months are high, some months are low. Some months you have projected income, but it doesn't land in your bank account until a few months later. And when it lands in your bank account, you're like, yes. But then those other months when it's kind of dry, you can feel like I'm a failure. Like I'm not making money in my business. And it's all just your mind playing tricks on you because you know that this is the path of entrepreneurship. Some months are high, some months are low. And that's why you really have to save and plan so that the busier and the, the more lucrative months can cover the drier months. But yet and still, I was finding myself in that pattern of connecting my success and even my worth with dollars. And I have to unlearn that. That's something that I am actively working on. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I want to earn and, you know, have a hefty, hefty net worth so that I can build a legacy for my kids and they will never, ever have to worry. And they will be out here living, um, bougie, very, very spoiled lives. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Maybe not spoiled, but privileged lives. Okay. That's okay with me that they should, you know, I, at the same time, don't want to become wrapped up in that in a way that I feel negative when things aren't always sweet. So with that said, I've been working on my self-talk a lot this year. So what that looks like is for me, I kicked off the year by reading the book, You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. I've had that book, the both the physical book and the audible version for a while. And Listen, it's not everyone's cup of tea. I got to say this, like I share what I'm reading, but it's not everyone's cup of tea, right? So I got to give you a big like boop, boop warning about that. However, what I like about that book is it just helps you to cut through the noise. It reminds you when you see it in print, it reminds you like, oh yeah, I do say that to myself or oh yeah, that is a limiting belief I have. And why do I have that? And it forces you to cut through that. And it allows you, it's so funny because the same time that I started reading that book around that same time, my pastor had a sermon about, trash talk, you know, and it was all about talking back to the devil. And, and basically like when you get a thought in your head that's negative or you are, you know, saying, oh man, that's not going to work out, blah, blah, blah. You flip that and it'd be like, why wouldn't it work out? And so what if it doesn't happen exactly the way I planned it? I bet you it'll work out better. I bet you it will be for the better that it works out if it works out in a different way. You have to learn to flip that, reframe that. At least I have to learn. That's what I've been focused on. Now, if you want to get down with it, I hope you do, <laughs> because it really, really is helpful when you work for yourself or in life, period. Like you can't accomplish things unless you really know how to combat those down moments, because those down moments will come. And it's all about being able to get back into your better zone as quickly as possible. So, you know, have your moment if you need to stay down to be like, that was a really rough moment. You know, that person's energy really rubbed me the wrong way and I'm feeling some type of way or that news I just got in my email. Damn, that really bummed me out. But then get back, get back into your zone more quickly because it's from your zone that good things come. So I talked about this in one of my earlier emails this year. If you're not on my email list, go over to sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter because we are getting back onto the regular newsletters. It's going to be twice a month. We're not doing weekly yet, but it's coming. It's coming. And it's coming on Sundays now, not six bullet. After update the outro, it's six bullet Sundays now, not Saturdays, right? So in my first email of the year, I talked about the fact that I have been working on making sure that I could get in my zone as quickly as possible. And so that means I even change how I approach memes on social media. Like, I don't want no struggle memes anymore. I mean, there's only so many like struggle mom memes that I can laugh at. I'm like, you know what? I'm not claiming that no more. I'm definitely not claiming nothing about being broke. Save it. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm not even laughing at it because it's not funny to me. I don't want that. <laughs> All right. And it's not to say we can't, you know, have our moments and chuckle as moms, but I find that there's just so much content that just makes you feel down. Like, oh, life sucks. And it sucks to be a mom and I can't juggle this. And oh my God, I'm burnt out. And I'm like, you know what? I That's not even helping. Like it's not even helping me to be seeing that because now I'm reflecting and I'm only reflecting on all the negative things about motherhood versus the positives. All right. And please don't get this confused with toxic positivity. This is not saying that life doesn't have hard moments. It's saying that I don't longer want to focus on the hard moments. So I hope you see the difference there. 
life has hard moments. I don't want to focus on the hard moments because when I focus on the hard moments, it makes life harder for me. That's how it feels for me. So I would rather focus on what's good, what I'm grateful for, what's going right, what I'm working towards. If things are not where I want them to be, that's where my mind is at, right? So I focus on speaking life over myself. I don't get to do this every morning, so I won't paint this picture like these YouTubers, like I wake up my 5 a.m. routine. No, no, no. All right, depending on how baby girl or baby boy wants to sleep, we might not be doing anything but just rolling out of bed and dashing them off to school (laughs) that morning. But when I am able to, I have been focusing on going out on the balcony, sitting down and doing my daily devotional, writing out my thoughts. Sometimes before I get into my zone with this, by the way, I'm not going to lie. I take a moment to journal out all the negative bad thoughts I'm having. If I had a bad day the day before, I'm like, here's what's going on. Here's what I'm stressed about, blah, blah, blah. Then I feel like, poof, okay, I gave that to God. Now let me do my devotional and pray. And it gets me into a better space. I've also been working on meditation. So for me, that looks like there are a few guided meditations that I really enjoy listening to. And, you know, I'll pop in my ear pods and I'll just sit, look out on the balcony and just kind of let that play and Also not going to lie, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I really hate slow audio, (laughs) even podcasts. I think you know already that I fast forward podcasts. I listen on 1.5 to 2x, depending how fast the host talks and also the platform. Like sometimes, like if you watch YouTube on TV, I can only do 1.5, but on my phone, I'm 2x in that. So (laughs) my meditations are faster than they're supposed to be, but I got to do what works for me. Okay. It's just too slow. But I just focus on speaking life over myself. I write about what's coming in my life. I write about what I'm looking forward to and, of course, what I'm grateful for. And it has made the world of difference. So I call that my expansive thinking moments. And so after I'm able to get that in, I'm ready to face the day. I'm ready to face whatever challenge might come my way. I'm ready to tackle, move on and thrive and win my day. And I've also been, you know, I I like to take my walks. If you follow me on Instagram, you see that. If I'm unable to take my walk, I'm shifting my focus now to doing my walk on my stair stepper machine that I bought off of Amazon. And in general, my focus is on being solution oriented. So life isn't perfect. We know that. And instead of focusing on what's not going right, I have to shift to, okay, what might work better for me? A case in point with that would be, okay, so we now have two kids and... (laughs) I just had to laugh because that still sounds wild to me. Um, I always joke with Moyo, my husband, because, you know, our paths crossed early before we even started dating. It just crossed randomly. Like we look back and realize our paths crossed in college. And I'm always like, I can't believe that dude that was at that party is my baby daddy. (laughs) So anyway, I'm going to leave that in too, because that's really how I think. Pivoting, solution-oriented. So, okay, we now have two kids and I'm finding that it's very difficult for me to go from mom mode into CEO mode. Mom mode into the, you know, CEO of Side Hustle Pro LLC and, you know, cranking out deep work. Deep work for me looks like being able to sit down, think through my lesson plans, outline it, script it out because I'm revamping podcast moguls, which I'll talk about a little bit later. That for me is deep work. I need to be able to concentrate without a little person asking me for apple juice (laughs) or wanting to get out of their playpen (laughs) and shouting to get out of their playpen. I cannot concentrate like that. And I have decided my solution is to stop trying to get work done on the days when both my kids are home. So That looks like I cram more deep work into fewer days in the week. And I was resistant to that for so long because I'm like, I'm a full-time mom and I'm a full-time boss. Like, I can only do deep work on blah, blah, blah days. And then, you know, I tried to go back to doing interviews two days a week. And I just, I need that extra day. So I'm only doing interviews one day a week. And that's okay because, by the way, I'm doing less interviews anyway. So it's okay if it's only on Thursdays. That's my interview day. And I've just had to accept that, you know what, it's not, don't think of this as I'm only working part-time in my business. Don't think of it that way. Like you have created this lifestyle for yourself. Number one, be proud of that. 
Like be proud that you are able to create a life where you can be present with your kids. You can say, all right, this is going to be a day where we go to the park, we go to the library, we do some kind of activity and I'm only focused on them. And maybe, you know, I, I can do a task that doesn't require a lot of mental energy, like a checking of the email or getting back to someone, um, quickly reviewing stuff like that kind of stuff. But I'll save the deep work for other days. That is okay. Instead of lamenting like, oh man, like I can't work full time in my business anymore. Think like full time looks different now. And thank God that I've created a life and, you know, God has blessed me with a life where I'm able to do that. So that's the solution that I'm currently going to be implementing. Just giving into surrendering to what my life currently looks like and stop trying to just do the most on the days when both of the kids are home because it's not going to work. And then what would happen, you guys, is I would feel really down and dejected. By the end of those nights, I would feel like, man, I didn't get anything accomplished because silly me was putting too much on the to-do list for that day. <laughs> so at the end of the night, when it didn't get done, I was feeling low, bad about myself. And that's just not where I want to be. In addition, I have realized that I work best in the morning. I didn't used to be a morning person. If y'all have been here for a while, you know I have not historically been a morning person, but that has changed for me. So for now, when my daughter goes to bed, I have been passing out. <laughs> I've been passing out around nine, 10 o'clock. Sometimes if I drink coffee too late, I can't pass out. So I'm really trying not to drink coffee that late, but I have been trying to just just go to sleep because she's going to pop up and, you know, she's still popping up at least once a night anyway. So go to sleep, get as much rest as I can. And then in the morning, you know, after she goes back down, take some time to walk on the stair stepper, do my meditation, devotion and do a little bit of work. And that has also been helpful for me and the solution that I am coming up with. So that's that. And speaking of that, let's talk a little bit about interviews. So I'm a podcaster. I interview people for a living. And I've always been someone who's kept my interviews on like two days of the week. I don't like stretching it out because an interview takes a lot out of me mentally. I find that the days that I interview, that's really all that I can focus on. I can't do an interview and also, you know, have a meeting with a sponsor about XYZ campaign. I just can't do both. I don't like that. I like solely getting into my interview zone, you know, putting on my Nikayla Sa has a pro host mode and just going into that deep because I want the interview to be as the best that it can be. And that's how I find that it's the best that it can be. But obviously I can't do that every day of the week because I need to do other things. So I just do two days of the week. What I'm finding is I need that day for other things. So I do live coaching with my podcast mogul students once a month, but I also do VIP coaching calls with my VIP clients. And all the meetings were starting to get tacked into the day, my second day of interviews. And I'm like, okay, no, 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 no. That's not going to work. So I have elected to just make my interviews one day a month. And I aim to do two interviews max each day, each Thursday. So that's eight interviews a month if you know we're having a good month. And that's good for me because guess what? There'll be many months where it'll be an interview, a solo, an interview, a solo, because that gives me space to not feel pressured to like do all these interviews and have to do all this batch recording. And it allows me to reconnect with you guys in a way that I've been missing. I've been missing when I started this show, used to hear way more about my journey. And because I was overthinking <laughs> what to share and how to share it, I was just doing less and less solos. And I'm off that. Like if I ramble a little bit, excuse me, but I think it's more important that you hear from me and you know what's going on with me. And it's not just like I'm hiding and I'm giving you a glimpses of my life via like a little bit of a side that I might share with a guest. So that is how I'm approaching interviews. And I love the space that that gives me and frees up in my life. And also I like the fact that as I stay on track, that will allow me and my team to really take a break because with interviews and it's spread out in two interviews being released a month, you get so many months of interviews done just in a month. And that's awesome. So by October, I'm hoping that we can just take a break and we'll be done with interviews through Q1 of early 2025 by um, this fall. So I'm really enjoying that. And I'm enjoying the challenge to show up behind the mic and talk and give you guys update and stop hiding and coming into the world and just stop being limited by perfectionism. I talked about that with my last week's guest, Helena, aka 
that nurse can cook. And I love that we had that conversation because that's real. So anytime you hear me saying to my guests, like, that's real, that hit me deep, it's because it does. I don't know what it is. Well, I know what it is. I know what it is. Because when I started posting content on Instagram and like really, really posting for real about Sahas a Pro, which was 2016, Instagram was a different place. Instagram was not owned by Meta. (laughs) It was a chill environment. Anything goes. We were creating our graphics and like word swag. (laughs) Y'all remember word swag? And it was just way more relaxed. Now it's a business and I'm part of the problem. I'm part of the problem because I use Instagram as a business (laughs) and it has made us all overthink. I've talked about this before, but it's something I have to continually fight against because it's just not the same place anymore. But I'm shifting. I'm not just focusing on Instagram anymore anyway. I will get to that in maybe not this episode, but some more episodes on social because since I'm doing two solos a month, I get to update you guys more on all facets of my business. And by the way, if you have questions or things you want to learn about, like if you see me do something, you're like, hey, Nikayla, I saw that you're now doing this kind of thing. Like, can you tell me about that? Or I'm seeing more ads from you. Like, what's your strategy behind that? I'm happy to share. I love talking about that. So I have a list of like episode ideas, but feel free to email or DM or in your review, (laughs) uh, let me know what else you want to hear. But back to that. I am looking forward to updating you guys with more solos. I'm looking forward to the space that I'll have between recording interviews. So I'm not so pressured to get an interview done. And so that I can really take my time in selecting guests, I think I've reached a point where in reflecting on what I enjoy most, the interviews I enjoy most, of course, I enjoy all interviews, but what I really enjoy is when I have a deep rapport with the guests. And that doesn't mean that I have to know them in advance, but I know that if I am sincerely interested in your business, how it's grown, and I'm just really curious about what you have going on and, you know, our personalities (laughs) hit it off, it just results in this kind of magic that I enjoy listening to. But there have been so many awesome guests this year, like Nicole Crowder, Kristen from the Gently Soap, Wow. Like, oh my gosh, you saw me with Marty of Boss Women Media. So everybody, everybody. And that's because I've taken my time. I've gone slowly. I'll insert a rewind episode if I have to, because I'm only reaching out to people and having people in the guest chair who I'm genuinely interested in. That doesn't mean you can't pitch. So some of these people have been pitches from their PR teams and Once I started researching or please send links in your pitches because I want to be nosy. Okay, send me the Instagram links, send me the LinkedIn links, send me the articles, everything so I can do a deep dive and decide like, oh, this person, I'm fascinated by them. That's what I want to be. I want to be fascinated. I want to be insanely curious and fascinated about your story because that comes across. That helps me to have a natural conversation where the questions are just flowing And even though I send my guests sample questions, I don't ever look at that during the interview anymore. I rarely, other than the lightning round, it's just all flowing off the top of my head based on my genuine curiosity. And I love those interviews, the very best. So taking space and reducing the number of interviews on the show allows me to do that. So that's my headspace when it comes to interviews. Now let's get into other facets of my business. Are y'all ready for this? All right. Podcasting has changed. There's a lot going on. It's a lot. I'm dizzy. I'm dizzy from everything that's going on. So let's talk about it. Okay. First of all, early January 2024, your girl was one of the ones affected by Apple switching up their iOS. Okay. Your girl's downloads per month got cut in half. What? Apple, are you serious? (laughs) Are you serious right now? (laughs) And it just so happened that it coincided with me joining a new podcast network. So at first I'm like, wait a second, guys, your platform, it's not showing the right downloads. This is not, these aren't my downloads (laughs) per month, but it was. And okay, so I've learned a few valuable lessons from this. Number one is you really shouldn't over- index on any platform when it comes to podcasting. Now, that's a little bit 
of a nuanced conversation because obviously when you start out, at least you should know that when you're starting out, you can't do every platform well. I don't care what anyone tells you. So nowadays, especially a lot of people are doing, you're starting with video and that's cool. That's wonderful. But it's very hard to do both video and audio well at the same time. And it's not impossible, but how you can approach that is to focus on one first and then scale the other because focusing on both, it's really not going to work. So you have to focus on getting really good at a platform, scaling that platform, then moving over to the next platform, being really good at that, scaling that. You know, you can use social media to drive traffic to multiple platforms. That's what I've always done. But you will start to see where the majority of your audience is gravitating to. And then it's going to take a little bit more work to get them somewhere else. So for example, if you're finding that you're Apple Podcasts, your subscribers there are growing, but you know not as many people are tuning into your podcast on YouTube. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do YouTube, but it just means that once you're able to, you're really going to have to sit down and come up with a YouTube marketing strategy to grow out your YouTube audience base. So I over-indexed on Apple, which I'm not mad at. Like I think that it is still a very important platform to be on. Why? Because the way my sponsorships and brand deals have been structured, they have been highly based on Apple podcast downloads and, and audio downloads, right? So in the future, as I build out my video platforms and deals are more based on video views and reach, then I will be able to diversify how my deals are structured. But for now, that's where my deals were and that's where they are. And it's still a platform that I care a great deal about. That's where I listen to podcasts. I listen to podcasts on Apple for the most part. So when that happened, it was a bummer for a couple of reasons. Number one, it definitely affected sponsorship dollars and it was annoying. (laughs) It was annoying because, uh, let's see, at that point, I was like, what, five months postpartum and I was still easing back into working. So one of the things that was nice to have is like sponsorship dollars for me was kind of like having a paycheck. It was consistent. It was something that I knew what to expect month over month. So when that shifted, it was no longer like having a paycheck. And so it was like starting over as an entrepreneur. It was starting over again from, you know, when you quit your job and you don't have a steady paycheck, you hustle different. And now I see it as a blessing in disguise because I had become quite complacent. And for good reason, I was taking care of my kids. (laughs) I was taking care of my kids. I didn't have time to be hustling and, you know, going as hard as I was. But it kind of woke me up in a good way. It woke me up because it was a reminder that there is no safety net in life. A lot of times people like to think of your nine to five job as a safety net. And it is more secure in some senses than entrepreneurship for sure. I will not deny that. There are many days I'm like, maybe I could just get a little, you know, consulting for a company, corporate kind of gig. Like, maybe I could just work out something. I'm not opposed, call me. But um, (laughs) I love a consistent paycheck as well is what I realized. So when I was able to build up my side hustle to my full-time job, my full-time podcast, professional podcasting job, And I had a steady paycheck via sponsorships. But when that shifted, it was like, okay, I need to restructure. And that's okay because I shouldn't have been overly reliant on any income stream anyway. So that goes for all of us, whether it's your job, whether it's your side hustle, whether it's your business, none of us have any business being overly reliant on one stream. That's put in too much of our eggs in one basket. So now I am happy that it's finally forced me to return to my own products, promoting and talking about my own offers in a way that I had scaled back from just due to bandwidth. And so my offers, and you guys will probably know this, that I don't talk about my offers as much as I should. And that changes. That is changing, okay? This second half of the year, y'all gonna get tired of me. Y'all gonna see a shift. And it's a good thing because I gotta tell you, I know that I'm not the only one that suffers from under talking about what it is you offer. And I think I saw this... I don't know where I read this or saw this, but 
it was essentially a statement that the only reason you're not getting more sales, whether that's for your consulting services, your courses, your products, anything, is because you don't have more brand awareness. It's because more people are not seeing it. If more people saw it, you would have more sales. And that was an aha moment for me. I have literally not been telling people what I do. And what I do is coach podcasters to grow their podcast through targeted and strategic marketing tactics. I have a program called Podcast Moguls where I coach aspiring podcasters to grow their podcast into a money-making endeavor. So I teach you how to go literally from starting your podcast and being as strategic as possible with how you name it, how you position it, your logo. Then I get you into the workflow of how to edit and record working smarter, not harder. And then I guide you through how to market your podcast in a way that will allow you to grow fast and then be able to make money from your show. And by the way, making money in podcasting, it looks different ways. So I just told you about sponsorship and with everything that's going on in sponsorship right now, what I am focusing on is pivoting podcast moguls to teach independent podcasters how to make money from podcasting and not be over-reliant on sponsors. So it will look like helping you create your own products, helping you understand how to talk about your products and how to grow your podcasting and platform and target it to potential customers and audience and how to create your lead magnet and start building up your email list, how to become an influencer on Instagram or LinkedIn or whichever platform feels better for you. Because let's face it, in order for your podcast to grow, you have to have the influence to encourage people to click that link after you've promoted your episode and start listening to your show. So if you're shying away from the influencer word, you've got to get over that. And so that is what I have been focusing on is refocusing my business to prioritize my offers and to share it with the world more. And so what that looks like for me is I've been updating podcast moguls. For a long time, I kind of used to kick myself a little bit. I know I've been busy the last four years having two whole children, (laughs) birthing two whole humans and trying to teach them how to life. But I still would kind of beat myself up like, man, I really wanted my course to have been updated by now and blah, blah, blah. But it was so serendipitous that this is the year that the updates have finally begun. Like Podcast Moguls 2.0 is in process. I just emailed today all of my Podcast Moguls clients and students and let them know like, hey, these XYZ modules are now brand new. You can go in there. You can see exactly how I record my podcast today in 2024. You will see brand new lessons. And it's so serendipitous that it's happening now because this is the year. This is a critical year in podcasting. This is the year, whereas, you know, the other years, people were just slowly starting to get into video. Now it's like video or bust. (laughs) There's no turning back. You have to start with both. And so I'm showing you how to do that in the most cost effective way, because you cannot. I mean, you could, but if you want to make money, then you should not go out there and invest $5,000 in equipment when you're not making any money from your podcast. I would not recommend going that route. And by the way, a lot of people who go that route, then you got to hire people. You just spending all this money. So that's something I'm very passionate about teaching people to still keep overhead low while scaling those podcast dollars and, and, you know, making sure that your margins are good, that you're really profiting from this endeavor. So it is the perfect time to update the course because now all of that is in there. How I record this podcast via Riverside is in there. And Riverside is what I use, by the way, to do the video. I do video and audio, but it's what allows me to interview guests. If you want to learn more about it, I will link to it in the show notes. It's riverside.fm and you can use code HUSTLEPRO to get 15% off any individual plan. If you want to start out, if you and your podcast host, co-host, or just you, you're starting your podcast. If you're not using Riverside, I don't know what to tell you. Do not do Zoom, okay? Zoom It's convenient, but it is not built for podcasting. So Riverside.fm, use code HUSTLEPRO. I will link to it in the show notes. So that's what I've been using since, I feel like since 2021 or so. And it's just been clutch. And again, I'm recording from my bedroom. You see me, I'm recording from my bedroom. And my podcast, as a result, is all profit, okay? Like I spend one time on equipment. And then so when I have a brand deal, when I 
promote something in my podcast and people buy, it's all profit. I didn't just spend, you know, any money on studio time. I didn't spend money on my lighting and whatever. It's just all profit, you know, minus what I spent for my editor and uh, VA and my social media content manager, of course, but I'm talking about per episode recording. So I am passionate about teaching you guys. And that is what I've pivoted to focusing on. Podcast Moguls 2.0 is being revamped and it will be live and ready for you by the end of June, 2024. So you're listening to this now, get in while you can. (laughs) Uh, No, in all seriousness, the price will go up. So you can join Podcast Moguls at sidehustlepro.co slash join to get podcast coaching from me, the full course, is lifetime. So as long as the course is up, you have access, all of the revamps, you get any revamps and updates that I make. And Podcast Moguls is currently $997. Yes, $1,000. But the whole point is for you to make that money back and more. It's currently $997. Like I said, there is a four payment plan for $297. So it's slightly more expensive if you do the four payment plan, but you can start as low as $297. So sidehousepro.co slash join to get more info there. And with Podcast Moguls, I'm just focusing on updating the content right now. The price will go up. I don't know when, but the price will go up. I'm letting you know, but I'm more focused on updating the content and making sure that I've covered all bases. And as I update, as my current moguls give me feedback, if there's anything else I'm missing, we'll tweak it, blah, 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 because I just want to cover everything that's happening right now from video to marketing to downloads, you know, being historically low in podcasting and what you can do about that before I focused a lot on the marketing that was working at that time. So now I'm expanding to cover things like becoming a a voice on LinkedIn, becoming a voice on Twitter, who they've just expanded the amount of video that you can post. Like these platforms are becoming more and more podcast centric. And I am covering that for you because the fact of the matter is you have to use social media to get eyeballs on your podcast. You can't just put your podcast inside of the podcast app and expect people to find it. You can't just put your podcast on YouTube and expect people to find it. You have to be posting clips, posting audio, posting whatever content that your audience resonates with. So I teach you how to, first of all, figure out who your audience is, your perfect listener, and then customize and tailor your content to that person so you can grow as fast as possible. So again, you can find out more information on podcast moguls at sidehustlepro.co slash join. And yes, it's currently 997, 297 if you do the payment plan and that price will go up once it's finalized so get in now but that's what we've been working on content core mission the timing all of that good stuff i love it and the last thing i want to touch on is focus i'm really big on laying low and building if you've been here for a while you know that i like to lay low and build and I have been laying low and building, I would say this first half of the year, because again, I am solution oriented and I'm just focused on understanding my new reality and working within my reality rather than trying to fight against it. So whereas before, maybe I could knock out my course in three months. I thought I could. I was like, oh, this is the first Q1 2024 goal. No, it's going to be an end of June 2024 goal now. (laughs) And that's okay. But because of that, I've been so locked in on that, I have deprioritized organic content. So if you see, I feel like I, because I love social media marketing, I love content creation, and I've been doing this for so long. Like one of my first jobs in marketing was as a social media marketing back in 2011. All right. So I've been doing this for a while and I think I've built up enough of a portfolio. If you go over to Side Hustle Pro on Instagram, you can scroll through and you can see my episodes, me, my family. You you learn more about Nikayla and it's going to be there for you. And when I'm ready to pick it back up, like we're still posting the episodes, don't get me wrong, but we're not doing enough across platforms like I would want to. We're not keeping every single platform up to date. And that's just because I haven't had the bandwidth to truly finalize that strategy. So once my podcast moguls course is finished, as well as I'm working on a branded course on another platform, it's a mini course only about recording, editing, that kind of stuff. Once I'm done with those two, 
at the end of this month, then I'll be able to shift back into content, just organic content. And I'm so excited about that because it's just so much fun for me. And I, I love entertaining. Like I consider that entertainment, but that also builds audience builds brand awareness because it, it brings people into your world and they're like, oh, what's this? How's a pro page? Oh, it's a podcast too. And all of that good stuff. But I've had to deprioritize that because I could only do one at a time. I can only do one at a time. And I accept that, but I also, I don't have a fear of no longer being relevant or anything like that. I think of that as whenever I'm ready to pick that page up, whenever I'm ready to really focus on organic content again, it always grows. Like everyone comes right back. You know, it might take a while to get back in your feet again, but with the posts are good enough, it all comes back. And that also is a part of self-talk and what you manifest. And so I don't see lack there. I don't see limit there. And I don't think of it as like, oh man, like I haven't been, it's gonna, I'm gonna be irrelevant, all that stuff. No, that's not what's happening. So that's a part of self-talk as well. So don't be afraid to pause something that you don't have enough bandwidth for right now while you work on something else. So that could look like, Hey, I need to, you know, take Nikayla's course, for example, right? Like there are two courses that I've purchased this year to really get better at my marketing funnels. So one was about my ads and one was about just overall funnel sales, all that good stuff. And I've just been locked in and applying that content to my podcast moguls marketing funnel. And that is my focus right now. That's what's of importance right now. So I'm okay falling back in another area. So I give you permission as well to pause what you need to, to really focus. So it's not the halfway mark of the year yet, but it's about to be the halfway mark of the year. And I got to tell you, like, it's not a scare tactic or anything like that. I love this time of year. Summer is a great time to launch, to start something new. So if you've been on like learn mode, preparation mode, this is a great time for go mode. So take it from me. If you are ready to start putting the action into it now, go ahead and do that. Pause what you need to and just take action in one area. And if it's podcasting, I would be happy to coach you over at Podcast Mogul. So go over to sidehouseofpro.co slash join. I will put the link in the show notes as well. And if you're watching on YouTube in the description box, whatever it is, now is a great time to start. I launched this podcast, Side Hustle Pro, in June 2016. So June is a special month for me for that reason. I just think it's just a beautiful time of year. And then all summer long, I was going to conferences with my Side Hustle Pro t-shirt and I was promoting it and networking and going to networking events. And it was just a beautiful season. So don't feel like you're behind. Don't feel like, oh, I need to kick things off in January. Let me wait till 2025. No, now is a good time. All right. And with that, you guys, I will be back next week. Hey guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you like the show, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts. It helps other side hustlers just like you to find the show. And if you want to hear more from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Side Hustle Pro. Plus, sign up for my six foot Saturday newsletter at sidehustleproco slash newsletter. When you sign up, you will receive weekly nuggets from me, including what I'm up to, personal lessons, and my business tip of the week week. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash newsletter to sign up. Talk to you soon.